a while since we played around with Capture One on Tutorial Tuesday. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to dive in, we're going to edit a portrait together, we're going to use different tools within Capture One to make it happen. I love Capture One. Let's just get straight into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, we're going to dive into Capture One. Like I said in the intro, we're going to be editing a portrait. Let's not waste any time. Let's just dive straight into it. I've got this portrait here. I took it on the Nikon Z8, actually at the launch event, but I really, really like it. I like the light. I like it's kind of a candid moment. Uh, it's just a lovely, it was a lovely kind of area, it was this alleyway, so the light is just, it's very directional, but I really like it. It's kind of a, a moody shot, but I want to do some things with the colours. I want to do a little something with the exposure. Let's play around with it. The first thing I really want to do is actually crop this image a little bit. So we're going to come up here to the top left, we're going to click on this shape icon here. We, this is something I really like about Capture One, is it's very easy to just move through these kind of points of editing so shape style adjust refine and of course exporting after that as well so that's really nice and easy we're going to start with shaping so we're going to actually crop this and i'm going to click this tool here to crop this now you can see i've already played around with this crop a little bit i want to actually click here and go unconstrained so i have full control over the kind of crop that i want to use and i think i want to go for something like this i don't think we need all the room around her i don't think we need all of the kind of extra space above her that we've got kind of here. It was kind of a one of those moments you just have to capture it with the camera. And so with enough resolution on the Z8, I'm able to then crop that with no issues at all. So I think we need to go for something, something like this. And I think that looks pretty good. We can just click the crop tool there. There we go. Lovely. Now the portrait is very much all about her. It's not about kind of where we are, what's around her. It's all just about her in this moment with the light and all that kind of fun stuff. Now we could then go over to the style tab where we've got a few different options for how we might want to proceed. So we could use some of the built-in presets. They can be really, really interesting. We can use built-in styles, which are fantastic. You can also get additional styles as well from Capture One, but we're going to start off with the built-in styles. I could use something like the creative edits, something like the cool tones actually looks pretty good. Airy summer. I actually think that looks pretty good as well. It's a little bit brighter, so maybe not the kind of the kind of vibe I'm going to be going for. Crisp Winter also looks pretty good. You can just mouse over these to kind of get an idea of what they're going to look like. And if you don't have an idea for your edit, this can be a great way to kind of get started, give you some inspiration, give you a, give you a kind of path, right, to follow. But we're going to go ahead and leave that for now. Let's just go to Adjust, and we're going to do this ourselves specifically. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually just cool this down. I'm going to bring the color temperature down towards the cooler end of things and I think I'm going to add a little bit of green in there as well in the tint. I think that's that's made enough of a subtle difference to begin with. We're then going to go ahead and just do some global edits so things like highlight shadows, the exposure in general. So I think for starters I'm probably going to leave the exposure where it is. I might just bring the highlights down a touch just to bring out a little bit more detail in her top here so that we're not just blowing that out completely and I don't want to bring the shadows up too much because I don't want to ruin this kind of moodiness we've got. So do you know what? I might leave it completely as it is. We're kind of doing this on the fly. So let's continue down. Now I'm going to leave the levels and the curve for now, but again, it's something we might come back to. And the next thing I want to do is start adjusting some of the color. I want to go for a more muted feel. So actually I could bring the saturation down to begin with. Maybe something like minus 20 would make a decent kind of start. And then with the color editor, what I'm going to do is just come to orange on the basic kind of color editor. I'm going to bring the hue over to the left a little bit. And let's just bring that saturation down just, just a touch. Same with the red. Just to kind of... So her skin tone isn't so vibrant with everything else being kind of muted. We want to, we want to make sure the whole thing is sort of fairly muted like that. Otherwise, I don't think there's a lot we need to do in the color editor. Let's come down to color balance. This is probably where I'm going to do most of the color grading for the photo. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to the shadow, so I can just click and drag that over here. Let's go for something like that. I think that looks pretty good. Let's just balance that out with a little bit of orange kind of in the mid-tones. Something like that. A little bit of orange in the highlights. Something like that. And I think that looks quite nice. We can always reduce that at a later date. And we can go into kind of a bigger, more detailed version of those by just clicking through the shadow, mid-tone and highlight there. That can be easier to kind of work with once you've 
Once you've worked out exactly what you want to do here, you can also use these controls on the left and the right to actually affect just how much of that color you're adding to those certain things. So for example, in the shadows here, I'm adding a bit of blue, but I, I don't want to do too much to her skin, for example, because you don't want blue skin. You're not, you're not in an Avatar film, so <laughs> it's not going to work out so well. The next thing I want to do, we're going to leave it like this. Again, what I love about this is we can, we can come back at any point and, and change any of this stuff. But now we're going to start getting into more granular editing. So for example, we're going to come up to where these layers are just up here. Obviously, we've got the background layer. I'm going to click the plus icon. That's going to create a new adjustment layer. And we're going to start off with, I think, a, a gradient kind of fill. So I'm going to bring that in from the bottom right, something like that. We could always extend that out a bit, just make it more feathered. I think that looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do with that is actually bring the exposure down. I want to darken this area down here where it's more in shadow, right? The light is clearly coming from the top left. So I want to darken from the bottom right just to really accentuate that kind of mood. The next thing I want to do, I'm just going to leave that adjustment layer as it is. I'm going to add a new one. And I'm actually going to click a radial filter. I think I'm going to, I'm going to pop that just over her face. Something like that, nice and sort of feathered. Now at the moment, if I adjust anything here, you'll see it adjusts everything except for that area that we've just kind of drawn a circle around. So we need to just come up here, right click, invert mask, and now we can just brighten her face just like that, which I really like. That's worked really well. And again, we can just come back and adjust these layers if we want to. I'm gonna add another layer. If we, also, if you mouse over the picture here, you can actually select these little icons here for the different layers, which is really handy. We can rename these layers as well, which I'm not going to do right now, but that can be a handy thing, especially if you're getting a lot of layers that you're working with. We're going to use a brush for this one. I'm going to actually increase the exposure before I even paint it on. And we can always right click as well, just to reduce that size. We can right click, we get this little menu come up. I think that looks really good. So we're going to go ahead and just paint on to her face a little bit here. And I'm actually going to paint down her arm as well, just because I, I don't want it to be too dark from this kind of shadow that we've painted on. That looks pretty good. We can we can actually brighten that a little bit again. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. We want to, we want to make sure her face is bright enough, right? It wants to be not necessarily the brightest part of the image because it is in shadow a little bit. We might even go back to the radial filter and just actually reduce that down a touch. But I think that looks really good. Now, something I really like about this, we can actually press Y and we can see it before and after, right? And we can actually drag this right and left to see the edit. So this is where it was before we started, and this is where we've gotten to. I, I much prefer the kind of color grade, the light. It, it feels good, right? The, the original photo is nice, but this is this is feeling good. Let's select the background layer again so we're affecting the entire photo rather than the layers we've created. Let's just add some finishing touches to this. So I'm going to come down to clarity towards the bottom. I'm going to up that a little bit. I like a bit of clarity in my photos, and I think I think it works, especially in this kind of situation. Let's go for something like 13. I think that looks really good. Dehaze we can leave, but vignette, you know what? I might just bring that down a bit to really focus in on our subject here. And I think I think that looks really good. I'm really happy with how that photo's come out, to be honest with you. Let's press Y again. Let's see the before and after. So that's before. This is after. I think that looks really good. We could even just come down to the shadow and, and maybe even just kind of make that even more intense with the blue if we really want to go for kind of a stylized look and then up the orange in the midtones and the highlights as well if we really want to kind of give this a, a very stylized look i might even bring the color temperature down towards the cooler side again and play around with that tint just a touch i think that looks great i think that looks really stylized i think it really accentuates the light I'm really pleased with that. One more before and after. So this is before. Again, you can do this by pressing Y and then you can just drag this kind of nice slider here. So before, that's where we started. Lovely photo, but I wanted to play around with the colors. This is after. Much more stylized, which I'll be honest, I go for. Now, I'd love to know what you think about the color, right? Is that something you would play around with? I personally love playing around with it, but not every photo works like that. But something like this, where I think it's already quite moody, I think lends itself well to quite you know involved color grading like this where it really has made quite a difference from where we were to where we are now i like the light here i'm i'm just very happy with this portrait it's a it's a you know 
this is this has gone well. We're going to be doing more tutorials on Capture One over the next few weeks. So let me know if there's anything specific you'd like to see. We're definitely going to do a video all about just getting started with Capture One. We did one a few years ago, but it's probably time for an update. A few things have changed. There's a few new things to play around with as well. But anything specific that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments because Capture One excites me. We haven't done a video for a while. I'm excited, but I'd love to make the stuff you guys want to see. So let me know in the comments what that is. Don't forget to like and subscribe. There's new content all the time. I'll see you next time. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.